I bought the Benro Mach 3 tripod online without seeing it first in person. And that was difficult. So I am making this video so another photographer out there can have more views of the tripod in usage before making their decision. The tripod came in a large box. It came with a bag. My bag came with a rip in it. I don't think I'll use the bag that much, but it's nice that it came with a bag and also a dust cover. I like the tool kit and I think I will keep it in my camera bag. This tripod comes with two removable center columns. The long one is the main one. It also comes with a very short center column intended for macro use. We will talk about that later. The Benro Mach 3 tripod comes in a variety of sizes. Some of them have four leg sections, some of them have three leg sections. Each model comes in aluminum or carbon fiber. This is the aluminum version of the extra long tripod, but I think you will still get something out of this video if you are intending to buy the carbon fiber version as almost every specification is identical aside from the weight and the material. The weight of the carbon fiber version of the extra long tripod is 5.78 pounds. The aluminum version in the extra long weighs 6.83 pounds. Is one pound difference worth doubling the price? Maybe it is, maybe it is, okay. But I got the aluminum version and I like it. For me, that weight difference is not critical because I am going to use this with heavy gear near my car. But that would just be so huge, right? This is a newer gimbal head. I didn't know how much I would like gimbal heads and I wanted to start inexpensive. I forget how much it was, but I remember years ago when I got this, it was relatively inexpensive compared to the others. And it's quite heavy. And I think it's made of aluminum because it gets really cold. Whatever, I have it and I'm putting it on now. Camera wise today, I'm using my Canon 6D Mark II and this is the Sigma 150 to 600 lens. I don't know where my lens hood is today. My Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens weighs 4.63 pounds. I use it in conjunction with the newer gimbal head. <laughs> it's too high. I'm going to lower the legs so that this works. <laughs> it's windy and my little camera and this little tripod just started to fall over but not that one it's not going anywhere Whoops. yeah it's fine primarily I'm going to be using it to take pictures of landscapes full moon, maybe some astrophotography, and birds or wildlife. How cool is that? There are two bald eagles here. They just swooped around. I got some pictures of them in the sky. Uh, not optimal settings, <laughs> but hopefully they'll come back. I had to set the tripod up so fast. So what I did was just unlock that first lever. What do you call those knobs? Releasing that first tension, and I've got something to work with right from there. See how this one is bulky and big, and I love it. And this one, I could hike up a mountain if necessary, but over the years, it turns out that I don't actually carry this up that many mountains. So it turns out that most of my effort in the photography department 
comes not that far from my car. You don't necessarily have to get a tripod that's going to work for you in every situation, but you should probably invest in the tripod that is going to work in the most critical situations or the most camera lens appropriate situations for you. There's the carbon fiber Surui, which I'm not doing this to compare this as if you would buy this over that. I'm just trying to explain. Hold on. So. No, I thought this was big. <laughs> nope, it isn't. It isn't big. This is what I've been living with. That. Look at that. Max height, column retracted. That's important for you to know. Here I would always, almost always, just immediately have to rely on the center column. And with a smaller camera, maybe that's okay. But when I got to the wildlife and the moon and I just wanted to be very still, it's just not stable enough. If I were only to open the first leg section, it's all ready. to my old Max, okay? To max out this one. Look at it. Oh, it's just fantastic. You might be thinking, why would anyone ever need such a tall tripod? And by the way, it can go even taller. To a max height using the center column of 85 inches, I believe, you would not usually have it up like this. You would usually have some of the legs partially retracted. And of course I do, and that is no problem. Because the whole thing is more stable, the center column is also more stable. And a huge difference, a detail I never thought about, with my wonderful Surui, the center column twists like that. And to tighten it, you have to tighten this right here. Oops, that's kind of no big deal, but actually that was a big deal in usage over the years because it's one more thing to tighten down and the more things that can come loose, the more problems that can happen. So I just had so many instances where my camera moved just a little bit and it was because this center column was all the way up and it wasn't tightened all the way down. Just, oh, I could talk a lot about that. But anyway, the Venro center column is grooved. It does not spin. This is very good for stability. The center column comes out to do so you have to twist off this base hook i've been using it a little bit but not like this no i only micro adjust so my ball head would sit on top or my gimbal head whatever and then i can get it i don't have to do this anymore <laughs> i'm always taking pictures like that and now i can stand up tall One of my concerns was that the leg width, the leg spread at the base would be crazy wide. I thought I'd be like in the way of other photographers should I be in a club or something. Um, however, it's totally fine. It's comfortable to stand here. You get a better area and back off other photographers because now I get my little area. And it's honestly not that much wider than what I was used to with my old Surui. You can adjust the legs independently. The leg clamp at the top of each leg has three locking sections. There's these like ledges here. There's the first ledge. That was gonna be the top locking point. So this is a little latch easily just comes like that. You know, you can move a leg between close and locking point one when the latch is down, right? But to go past that, I wouldn't have to lift. Now I can go up and 
there's two, there's two. You know what I mean? If you have a center column, this is, but that's why it comes with that very short center column also, because then you could have this like this on a rock or on the ground. You could get that, that low to the ground. In between those, you know, if you need the leg to be right there, it's still gonna stay there. I suppose it might depend how much weight you have and what the circumstances are, but it, it's a very independently adjustable leg. The top of the center column is the base plate. The base plate diameter is 68 millimeters. Before ordering this, I thought, hey, I've got a great idea. I'll just remove this long center column and use the short center column that comes with it, therefore saving a bit of weight. Nope, not really gonna happen. The short center column is very short and it's designed for like temporary macro use. There has very little leeway here, too little. And the base plate on the short version, it's different. It's not as wide and wonderful as this. There's also a hook here. You could hang something. You cannot transfer that to the short center column. Take a photo. You might do a better job than me. Two second timer. The most important critical reason why I wanted a new tripod is because I grew to dread using the center column on my old tripod. I wanted a tripod that was tall, really tall. Because you might be thinking, hey, I'm not gonna get the extra long version, I'm just going to get the long version. Great idea probably, right? Maybe only because I had this experience where I'm coming from, that's why I overcompensated with the extra long version but I certainly don't regret it. And I just couldn't see both of them in person. I wish I had it to compare for you as well. I thought it was cool, the idea that you can have a leg hanging down over a rock on an embankment and stuff with the extra long leg. That's a cool concept. But really what sold me on the extra long version was the max height with the column retracted. Just check what it is. Just make sure that the max height with the column retracted isn't shorter than you intend, than you want. I can figure out what is the exact perfect max height with column retracted for me. Like, isn't that beautiful right there? Ah. Uh, the maximum height with the center column retracted for the carbon fiber and the aluminum version is 71.06 inches, which is 180.5 centimeters. The maximum payload capacity, you know, the weight you're supposed to put on top for the carbon fiber version and the aluminum version is 44 pounds. It's amazing. It's ama I knew it would be sturdier, that's why I got it, but it's amazing how much sturdier it is. The foot mount screw hole is 3 8 The foot size is 34 millimeter. It comes with rubber feet and spiked feet. There's the, there's the rubber feet. I was worried that having multiple leg sections makes tripods weaker. That is why I did not get the four leg section. So my old one was five leg sections and it's not that big a deal to twist lock and open them all. And I got really used to it, doing it all the time. However, it does matter. I just didn't want more legs. Why should I have more leg sections? Now that I have this tripod, I can see that probably Benro is very, very smart. And the one they made with four leg section is probably also very stable. It's probably just fine. Uh, but I certainly don't regret this long one with the three leg sections. I love it. Of course, having four leg sections means the overall carry size is a bit shorter. Look how long it is, right? 
So this isn't the one you're gonna stick in a backpack. This one's long, but I usually don't even fold it down. So to me, it's this long. <laughs> and I just put it in my car that way whenever possible because it's easier and more fun. I see now that having the bigger legs is a huge part of the sturdiness, not only the leg sections. Leg diameter. Section one, leg diameter, 36.2 millimeters. Section two, you know, they get smaller because this one goes into that one. Section two, uh, 32.4 millimeters. And the final one down here is 28.6 millimeters wide in the leg. This really matters when you're getting a tripod. The thicker legs are sturdier. Twist locks. Twist, open, twist, lock. Some people hate these. Since I went to the beach on a very windy day and sand was everywhere, I did experiment with taking one of these all the way off by just untwisting it all the way and taking it off and just uh, wiping it down and it's fine. And that was pretty good. And I was able to put it back together. You don't have to twist this a lot, but you have to make sure it's closed and open. I don't know, I'm just used to it, so I don't really have a complaint about that. The tripod I'm using right now to hold the camera that is filming me has the other kind of locks, and I like those too. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. I didn't have a choice, it just came like this, so. My first use a tripod with the sunrise, and I'm so excited. Here's what the top of the tripod looks like. This is actually very important for you to consider because you may have a leveling head, a bowl head, a gimbal head. There's so many different kinds of top pieces to connect your camera. And I was kind of thinking like, hey, I'll just buy this and then decide if I want the bowl leveling. And uh, no, can't really do that. So this blue part, I'm pretty sure is permanently on there. This isn't a big round hole that you might see on a bowl head. And I didn't really put that together before buying it. So now if I wanted one of those leveling head things, I would have to get the model that looks like a center column and then has the little half bowl at the top. It has a spirit level. You know, one of these bubble things. I really like it. It's not a quick process every time. That can take a few minutes. In case you might be wondering, I am using the bubble level on top of the tripod pretty much every time because my um, gimbal head here does not have a leveler. I don't have a leveler. And I can't decide if I want one or need one, but I think the bubble thing is helping me. Regarding cold shock, because it's aluminum, I would like to say that this Miwer gimbal head is way colder, much colder to my hand than any of these, than any of these bars. It's really not bad. I never put down the legs unless I have to. I like to just go, pick it up and go. It's pretty easy. It's really not that bad to carry. I'm going to try a pano here and I'm going to try to use a spirit level, bubble level here.
right. I don't do a lot of panoramas, but I really should. And maybe with this new tripod, I will. I think the tripod is level. Oh, I could also check the level on this rail thing. I'm going to do the pano, what I call the easy way, which is just sort of guessing and sort of using the numbers down here. And I think, I can't remember what it's supposed to be, like 15 degrees. Anyway, I know you're supposed to have some overlap, but I'm just going to take a pretty simple shot. And really what I'm hoping for is that it's more level than what I am used to getting with my old tripod. Put it on a two second timer. All right, here's number one. Okay, and then I'm just gonna move this about started the ocean. And usually between my panoramas I could do something kind of crazy like because that way when I'm editing it makes it so much easier to know which set is supposed to be a panorama. Okay, let's try that again. Do that. I'm really making this video to help people see the tripod and it's not gonna be filled with like amazing photos. I'm not a professional photographer and I'm not taking a lot of time with all of these, which would probably be necessary. Like, you know, it's about the tripod, not the photos, but oh, I will at least show the photo I tried to take today. I hope this video helps somebody out there as they are shopping for their tripod. And the final thing I wanna say is about the carbon fiber question. I, of course, I want a carbon fiber version of this tripod because that's the cool thing to do. I was worried I would feel sad and inferior because everybody else has a carbon fiber tripod. But Benro made this too. It's not like it says for idiots on this one. And you know, it, it's a great tripod. Because after all, I did that, this one, when I got this Surui tripod, it is the carbon fiber one. I paid extra for it to be made of carbon fiber and it's got those cool lines on it but all this time that I thought oh I have the cooler tripod it turned out wait a minute they still have something better than me they still have a bigger stronger yeah there's always going to be something better that the next guy over there has peace I need peace I need I just want my photo to be sharp I don't want to bend down. I don't want my camera to fall on the ground. I just want my photo to be sharp. So get your priorities straight. Choose the tripod you want that you're going to use most often that works with your favorite lens. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Bye. Thanks. Hope you get a good tripod. Is that a bird up there? Nope. Okay.